Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Can you believe it? It's Thursday already? I can't. I don't know where the days and the weeks go. I guess keeping busy is what really does it, huh? So I hope everybody's doing well. I've been keeping myself busy. I think I finally, um, have pretty much everything, hey, do, clean that I wanted to clean. I'm just, hold on one second. I'm trying to share this in on my business page. Okay, there we go. I hope everybody's doing good tonight. The weather has finally changed here in Pennsylvania. It is hot as can be. So I think summer is finally here. Uh, before we get started with these cute little turtle friends tonight, I just want to make a couple of end of the month announcements so you don't um, miss out on the opportunity in case you've been thinking about a few of the things I posted um, and weren't sure. So I'll just remind you because we're coming to the end of the month and it will be ending. The You Are Amazing um, class, Zoom class, and I'm just trying to look for... It can the uh, You Are Amazing kit comes in this beautiful box and it has enough product inside with beautiful colors to make, um, I believe it's 16 cards. Yes, 16 uh, cards. And it comes with instructions. But what we're going to do is hold a class, create alternative pro projects, and offer a free PDF for those and have a Zoom class also. That's going to be June 1st. Hey, Sonia. How are you, honey? Hey, Peggy. And if you use this host code, and I think this is um, at the top of the page, actually, use this host code, um, you'll get the PDF for free. And you, um, I'll send you the link to the Zoom class for June 1st. And uh, it should have be a fun time. Last month's was really fun. And just as a last-minute reminder, if you've been thinking about becoming a demonstrator as either a hobby demonstrator and enjoy the discount like I get, or be a business builder, and if you do decide to become a business builder, I will uh, design and set up your blog with all the Stampin' Up! links so your blog fits for a Stampin' Up! business. Um, and that's a $200 value. So uh, for the Join Plus promotion, Instead of $125 worth of product, you'll be getting $155 worth of product for the $99 plus tax. There is free shipping. So if you're interested or you've thought about it and you just were on the fence and you want to give it a try, there is no obligation. Um, if you decide that it's not for you, Stampin' Up! doesn't come after you or anything it's you just drop and that's all there is to it so I'd love to have you on my team if you've been thinking about it so tonight we are working with the turtle friends I wasn't too sure what I wanted to create with this tonight and I've been working on a few other classes so I decided on the turtle friends and the turtle friends actually comes with a punch if you can see that he's so cute um, I did change I am gonna change things up a little bit my ribbons I decided to go with all dark ribbon so we won't be using this light ribbon tonight 
I didn't like the color of these, um, the shell. And I'll tell you, I pulled out, and I don't even know if the stamp set is here. Yes, it is. If you saw the Butterfly Brilliance, it comes in one piece. And I actually just took out the pieces that fill in the centers so I could create what looks like the shell, parts of the shell of the turtle to stamp on the background. And I'm not too crazy. Sorry, I'm just trying to find something. Um, I'm not too crazy about the dark of this color. So instead of doing the soft suede, I think I am going to switch to the crumb cake and see how that turns out. So we'll have these two cards. Um, I also use the Hippo and Friends dies. And for the heart, this is from the Floral Heart dies. And um, just the two little turtles on the inside. And then we have this little treat box with the turtle with the Velcro clothes. And when you open it up, there's two little Hershey nuggets inside. Hey, Debbie, how are you? You want the punch? Yeah, well, you have the stamp set. You tossed your pieces out. I was going to, but I decided to keep them. And because um, you'll see with my stamp sets, I know you get these pieces with them. And I never use them. But I do save this piece. And I always put it back on my stamps. So these little pieces were still in there. And that's what I decided to use. So they worked out pretty good. So let's start with this card here. These little guys are so cute. So I have, let me just grab the card supplies. I'm using Old Olive, Pear Pizzazz, and um, So Saffron, I believe that what is the color. Let me just see. Yes, Soft Sea Foam. And then I cut the heart out in the Old Olive. Now when I took the picture, I actually took the picture without the heart. And I wasn't too sure about how it looked. So I decided to add the heart to the center and just pop it up. So I ended up cutting one of those out as an extra. So let's just get started. We have our normal card base, eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. Yeah, I wasn't going to use them either, but I wanted to do something different with the background. And that's really the only reason I decided to use it. I didn't want to use DSP. Um, and I just didn't want to use an embossing folder. I wanted to do something just a little different. So we've decided to create some little... Um, tortoise shells okay so our next piece is five and three eighths by four and one eighth and then we have five and a quarter nope that's a lie three and seven eighths by five and one eighth now if you miss the um measurements no worries i will have the pdf in the room tomorrow probably by noon I don't want to promise because I just never know what the day is going to bring. Okay, so we're just going to lay the... Just lost my train of thought. Pear pizzazz down on this old olive base. Make sure it's centered. And there's only um, a sixteenth of an inch. 
around the border of this piece. And then for our soft sea foam, we're going to grab my horrible looking pad. I need to invest in a new one and a piece of scrap paper. So all I did was took the little turtles with his eyes open. The other one, um, you'll see when I make the, let's see, is it in here? Yeah, you can see one has his eyes closed and one has his eyes open. And we are just going to randomly stamp these little guys with Old Olive. Now you want to make sure when you stamp them on the background, you try to keep moving either your stamp or your page around because you really don't want to end up having all your little turtles facing the same direction. Let me just clean this off. You know me when it comes to ink. Let's start down here. And we're just sticking him on here randomly. Let's put one straight. And we'll put one little head peeking over the side. And there we go. So just randomly on the background, whoops, crash. We're going to close this up. And then we're just going to layer this right on the front of the card. I've seen them, um, you, when the cow stamp was out, I've seen them used for that, and also the giraffe. When we had that one, I don't know if it's still available. The giraffe was cute. Okay, so we're just going to center this on the front of the card. And I already glued it on. I hope I cut my pieces and I didn't. So we're just going to quick measure this again. I think it's three and seven eighths. And it is. So we're just going to. Let me just head over to my trimmer and trim this off. Because I want this to be the same size as that layer. To be honest, before I glued this down, I wanted to put it on. This way I could make sure the edges are nice and straight. And if not, I could always give it a little trim. So now we're going to hope. And I'm just layering um, the pear pizzazz with a piece of old olive just to break up the back a little bit. Just going to make sure this is even and make sure it's glued. And I'm just going to trim this little edge off right here. So I hope everybody's having a good week. We had some crazy storms overnight. The weather has been just crazy. So all I want to do is center this in the middle it's on the front of the card just going to not straight so let's straighten it out and like i said this is just to break it up a little you really don't if you notice you don't really see it so it really isn't necessary And then with the um, Flora Heart dies, this is also an old olive. Okay. So 
So we're just going to glue this on the front of the card. Just random put dots because I don't want it to ooze out from behind. Hey Em, how's your headache? Did it go away? Okay, so we're just going to center this. Make sure it's even. Move it over a tad. I think that looks good. Just make sure it sticks down. Forgot to take out one tiny little piece here. I had these little pieces all over. Okay, that looks good. And then for the heart, I am just going to pop this up grab some dimensionals here I just took out some what the heck did I do with them isn't that crazy I took out a whole here they are they're right here in front of me took out a whole new batch and I have no idea where here they are okay so we're just gonna pop this up and I had thought about using hearts on this heart and I decided not to so we're just going to thank goodness for two sides of the paper pop this right into the center and I just want to make sure it's in here even I'm just going to lift it up for a second okay so there we go, and that's our heart. Now we get to stamp this little cutie. And I'm going to stamp them on the soft sea foam. And let's see, what color did I stamp him in? I think I did him in the old olive. And he's a cute little guy. And I love the fact that he has a punch. Okay, so we're just going to give him a good stamp. He's so cute. And then we're just going to grab, instead of putting the uh, shell on him, we're going to put the sentiment in the center. And it says it's time to celebrate. So we're just going to, and I'm going to stand up so I get this in here straight. We're just going to stamp this, and that looks pretty good. And then we're going to give him a little bit of color. I had put him on at first without color, and it was just too stark. So I'm using dark old olive, light granny apple green, and light old olive. So what I'm going to do, let me get this out of the way. I'm just going to add some darkness. Because his shell would cast a shadow. And his little legs aren't fl flat or square. So I'm just going to round it off a little bit. Hit the edge of the tail. And then I'm just going to go up the bottom of his neck just a little bit and hit under his mouth. Okay, then we're going to grab the light old olive and we're going to outline. And if you notice, I use the nibs when I am coloring close to the line. And I actually use it most often because um, there's less run or bleed. Um, they don't bleed as much with this side. The flow of the ink is a little different. So all I'm doing is going where I did the dark 
and outlining because I want the center to be a different color so it just shows that his little legs aren't exactly flat okay so he looks a little crazy right now so now I'm going to take the uh, granny apple and I am going to use the brush side and all I'm going to do is brush over the complete area right over everything I just colored go around his eye just to fill in that center blend the other colors together that I just colored because this has more alcohol in it so it will help blend those other colors together yeah I love that heart too Peggy so how's your so your headache is still there too I like that heart too Peggy I don't think I have even used the stamp set for that yet and it's from last the last catalog okay so let's just grab this punch does anybody have this punch because I'm curious I haven't explored this is the first time I've taken this set out and I didn't notice it at first just going to line him up but the punch has two little holes I'm curious as to what those holes are because there's nothing unless it's for uh, a tag punch the hole in a tag okay so now we got our little guy punched out we're just gonna pop him right up onto the front of the card just so you know I do oh good it went away I'm glad <laughs> you in the dark Peggy okay so we're gonna just center him on this heart just like that and then we're gonna grab some ribbon and I'm almost out and we're just going to I did color this linen ribbon with the dark um, mossy meadow because I wanted to make sure that um, the ribbon was really dark I don't know I just didn't like how the ribbon looked being light I wanted a little bit more contrast so we're just going to tie this ribbon now the ribbon gets really stiff when you color it with the blends it does make it a little easier to um, tie okay So that looks good let's just fix this little spot right here make sure grab some glue dots there it is I love my little pokey tool I'm gonna make sure we put everything where it's supposed to be I'm still trying to learn um, where I moved everything when I cleaned my craft room it's been the same for the last two years and I decided to revamp it and really clean get rid of stuff and move furniture and do my windows and really clean and the first day I tried to make a card I had no clue where I put anything so it took me longer to find my supplies so see I think well, it doesn't really look that much different, I guess. 
but I did. This is Old Olive, and this is Mossy Meadow. So let's just go to the middle of this card. And again, the Old Olive is 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth, and the basic white is 5 and a quarter by 4. And what I did to the inside is I took the two little turtles, and I'm going to... Let me just wipe this off a second. So the one thing I didn't do is uh, clean my blocks. They need a good cleaning. But what I did is I took my block that it has the score lines in it. And I just wanted to get my little turtles lined up on this line just so they're, I'm going to move him over, just so they're touching nose to nose. Like I said, one of these little guys has his eyes closed. And that looks good. And we're going to pull this pad back because you know with uh, photopolymer stamps, you really should use some kind of pad or foam underneath to get the best possible um, impression from your stamps and we're just going to ink these little guys up and I'm sticking with the old olive and I am going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp back on and we're going to just put these down here at the bottom and the reason I stamped them off is because for the sentiment, I wanted that to be nice and dark. So we're going to use the same old olive and we're going to just add in, hello little one. Right in the center. Just like that. Put that aside. Let's get rid of the ink. Don't want any disasters. And then we're just going to look at that piece of Iggy hair. He's quiet tonight. And we're just going to glue this right to our old olive layer. And then we're going to add it to the center of the card. I hear the birds. They're singing to me. They're probably enjoying themselves right now because I think we're um, supposed to get rain tonight. Okay, so there's card number one. I really do, comparing it to uh, the picture I took without the heart, I think that darker background looks so much better. So there's... My baby likes the turtles. Thank you, Miss Julie. I didn't even see you come in. Having fun with these little slow guys. Just so... um. While I'm thinking about it, uh, tonight, from now until Monday, if you place a $35 order, you'll get these make and takes for free. And as a bonus, um, I will throw in the 6x6 paper, ribbon, uh, the little stamping spot, some little mulberry flowers, tearing tape, and foam tape as an added bonus, as a thank you for shopping with me. I really do appreciate everybody that shops. So now we're going to work on this little guy. And like I said, I am going to change up the background. I'm just not really happy with it. And the other thing I did different that, of course, you know, after the fact, I have the uh, pear pizzazz. I'm actually going to line the pear pizzazz 
with the old olive on this card. And for these little guys, I'm also going to add his um, tortoise shell back. And I don't know why I didn't add it to the card when I first made it, but it's never too late. We're going to just change it up. Okay, so this time we're using the old olive base again, but this time it's 11 by 4 and a quarter, and it's scored at 5 and a half. Now you would think I was going to have it work this way, but I'm actually doing it this way. Just a little something different. And then I'm going to add a layer of the pear pizzazz. Make sure it's the right way. And then we have our... Um, I don't know why I can never remember the name of this paper. Soft sea foam. I want to keep calling it so saffron, and I know it's not even the same color. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so I'm going to try it this time in the crumb cake and see what happens. I'm going to keep the turtles back with the um, soft suede, but I just want to see what it looks like on the back being a little different. So like I said, I grabbed the pieces from, I got a little dark, that could be because I was in front of the light love. I'm going to use those little pieces from the uh, Butterfly Fly Brilliance, and I just randomly placed them on. I actually do have another piece, but I'm going to stick with the three, and again, I'm just going to, I'm going to just test it first. Okay, we're going to just ink these up, and again, we're going to randomly put these on the background, and we're just going to turn it every which way. Let's go this way this time. And you could put as little or as many as you want. We are going to cover some of it up, so. But we're just going to fill in. Let's, let's just get this one up here. And, and then we'll do one more right here. So I think I like the lighter color just a little bit better. Okay. So let's layer these up. Again, I'll have all the measurements in the group tomorrow. But we have our basic card base. We have our pear pizzazz, and I should really use my seal. I use so much glue. It just makes it so much easier. And this is five and, um, nope, I don't think it is five and three eighths. It looks like it's an eighth of an inch. Let's just check it out. Yep, this is five and a quarter. So five and a quarter by four. And this is five and one eighth by three and seven eighths. Okay, so we're just going to layer this on the front. Is it still dark, too? Okay. So there's the front. Then I have my, and I did it again, but I think I cut these right. Yep. Okay, so I have my old olive and my pear pizzazz, 
and we're just going to grab this little guy and you just pull him off and I use the one I think with the eyeballs open and we're going to stamp him across and I'm going to leave him in all green so his back and his outline we're going to leave in the green and all I'm going to do is I grab the little turtle with the eyes open and I'm going to first stand up so I can see and I did it again just going to stamp him on this end make sure I get rid of that you know what will happen and then we're just going to stamp one on this end because you'll you see it's going to be um, covered I'm just going to add them in the center just to finish it off I know you're not going to see them okay and then I'm just going to grab his little shell and his shell is so cute you just have to make sure and I'm going to stand up again so I can see it but you just have to line it up and give it a stamp and see how cute he is with his little shell makes it look so much cuter okay so there he is and these two I'm going to leave because, like I said, I'm using the Hippo and Friends die. So it's going to cover it up. You're not even going to see it. So we're just going to layer these together. I'm going to have to try to find new ways to use this little guy. Because I just think they're so cute. I think, as a matter of fact, he'd go, they'd go really well with the Hippo and Friends stamps. Mix and match them for a cute little birthday card. Okay, so we're just going to take these two layers, and again, we're going to center them, and I'm going to lift it up so I can make sure that it's centered. Looks pretty good, I think. And then I have a piece of Suttles DSP. Old Olive with the Hippo and Friends die. And I'm just going to, and you really can't see it, but I'm going to grab, I have ink all over, look at that. I'm just going to grab, um, the mossy meadow and there's a little grass stamp and I'm just going to add some grass just a few little mounds of grass just let me wipe that off and then I'm going to glue this together going to layer this up. I'm going to uh, glue this one down and we're going to pop the whole piece up. I really do like these dies. There's quite a few. There's three, I think. Three different shapes and they are just so cute. Are you going to use it this weekend, do? That's good. Uh-oh. What did I just do? Oh, there it goes. Okay. So let's just, while we're thinking about it, I am going to cut up some of these ends. And we are going to pop this up on the card. So does anybody have anything fun and exciting planned this weekend? I think 
if it doesn't rain, I know I have to mow like a never-ending chore. Oh, you're right. That's brilliant, Peggy. Yes, I could have done that, couldn't I? Because his little um, shell is separate. I just thought I would bring more attention. Oh, that's not straight. Just want to line this up. Yes, you are right. I could have used his shell for the background. I think that's straight. Let me look. I think this side has to go up just a tad. Okay, so there is the front of the card. So let's get this little guy stamped. Now for the um, this one, let me just pull out my soft sleeve. And I'm going to pull out my blends. Now, this time, I have to let me grab a piece of white because I did not grab one. How crazy is that? When I was cleaning my craft room, this weekend, I found a whole bunch of Whisper White cardstock. I had it separate, and I didn't even know I had, had it. Isn't that crazy? Okay. So I'm going to take this off suede, and this time that's what I am going to stamp our little friend in. So we're just going to... Oops. Give them a good stamp. Okay. Now, while he doesn't have his shell, I am going to grab my dark soft suede, my dark crumb cake, and my light crumb cake. And I wanted his shell to be different than his body. So, again, using the nib part, I'm just going to add a shadow, right, and you don't really notice this too much. I know it's there. That's where his shell has that little dip in it, and then I'm just going to outline the rest of his shell and it doesn't have to be neat and perfect because we're going to go over this with a few colors now if you wanted to learn a little bit more about coloring with blends pencils and copics i do have a coloring class this month we've been working on the in bloom flowers and this weekend, I'll be working in the Copics. But here's pencils and here's blends. So when you get used to using the blend, Stampin' Blends, you really can get a good dimension in your images. And I do three videos a month, uh, one for each coloring. Um, they have rumble. I don't have enough yard to have one of those but it's only three dollars a month and you get a video for blends a video for copics and a video for pencils so if you're interested just head to patreon.com backslash gal friday stamping and you can sign up there there's other tiers I have a monthly card class. And then um, just a middle 
um, like a midline. Okay, so that was the dark crumb cake. And then I'm going to take the light crumb cake. And again, I'm just going to outline right around the whole shell again. And most of this you're not even going to see. I'll know it's there. But I'm going to leave a little bit of white space in the middle. Not so much on this one. And then once I outline it all, and I should have probably had one ready, but I'm just going to wash over the complete shell so it blends all these colors together. And we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to head over to our green and we're going to color him in just like we did the little guy. So we're just going to put a shadow under his shell. And again, his legs are rounded, so we want that shadow to be round. And then we're just going to go under his chin, down his neck, and up from the bottom. Just to add a little bit of shadow. And then we're going to grab that light old olive again, and we're going to extend this color and outline the rest. And you don't have to worry too much about it not blending that well, because once we put the lightest color, we're going to wash the whole thing, and the lighter blends have more alcohol, so it will blend these colors together just a little bit quicker. So we're just going to outline this little guy just like that. And then we're taking that granny apple and I'm going to use the brush this time. And we're going to brush the whole image or I should say the whole area it changes the color of the old olive. And this lighter color will help blend the other colors together. So as that's working, I'm just going to grab a black marker. I'm just going to make his eye a little bit more distinct. Just like that. And let's stamp his shell. I'm going to use the soft suede. To stamp on, stamp his shell on. Give it some good ink. And let's just get this lined up. There we go. He's so cute. I left his toenails white. I guess I could fill them in. I'm going to use the light crumb cake and just give them a little color. There we go. And let's just grab this punch and punch this baby out. Lot, make sure he's lined up really well. Now you know that I usually do not like the white around my images. But for tonight's card, I really wanted him to stand out. And he really does when you get the white on him. So let's just pop him up onto this card. A busy lady, yeah, Peggy. My, uh, the reason being is my husband's been ill for the last um, 
for a, quite a few years, but the last three years, he's really gone downhill. So whatever help he can help, he can't help me. He hasn't been actually out of his chair in just about three years. So I have to do his work and my work. And it makes it a little hard sometimes. And now we're dealing with, um, we think he may have Parkinson's because he has all the um, symptoms of having Parkinson's. So we'll see. We're going to the doctor in June to the VA to get tested and we'll see what happens. I'm hoping not. It's hard as it is. So I couldn't imagine having to do that too. Okay, so I just colored a few pearls with dark old olive. And then I'm just going to tie my bow. Because I know I rambled on. I probably taking my sweet time here I should move I have one more little project to do okay so we're just going to tie this bow up and that looks pretty good and we'll be able to see the difference on this card because this bow is so light I really do think and we're going to stick this right here. We'll be able to see what the difference is. Trim the tail. Ooh, my scissors are getting dull. Okay. Let's straighten out that ribbon. And we'll add the pearls, but yeah, I think I like that dark ribbon better. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Put these little pearls on. They should be dry. You know me when it comes to, and all with ink, I like to get it all over. Okay, so we're just going to add these we really can't see this fourth corner so i'm just going to add them to these three corners i always like adding even to the corner so it looks like it's being held down by brads okay so there's the front of the card now for the inside of this card all i did was Put the happy belated birthday. Sorry, I was slow. And the little turtle with his eyes closed, since he looks like he's a little embarrassed that he forgot. So let's grab this little guy. And we are going to use the old olive. And we're going to stamp this little one. And I'm not going to put his shell on. I just want him to be outlined in the middle. And then let's grab the sentiment. I have all my, <laughs> I have all my stamps sticking to my blocks here. So I have to keep moving them. I guess I got to get another set of blocks. Just seems like I don't have enough. All right, that's crooked. So I like to lay my sentiment down like that and then pick it up because it seems to go on a little straighter. And we're just going to put this right in the corner. And then we're going to close this up and glue it all together so we can get to that little treat holder. 
Ooh, just looking at that upside down, it looks like it's crooked. Let's see what it looks like when I put it in the card. I think that was like my card the other day. I didn't realize it until I took the picture. I think I put the sentiment on crooked. Okay. So there's the center of the card. I'll glue this up. And again, this is five and a quarter, uh, five and three eighths by four and one eighth, and then five and a quarter by four. Those are my layers. And then we're just going to fit that in the center of the card. Hey, Margaret, how are you? Hey, Nita. Did you ever get that second package, honey? <laughs> or the original package, I should say. It's still out there floating somewhere. I can't believe it never got there. Okay, so there is card number two. And I definitely do like the darker bow, I think. What do you think? Darker bow? Even a shell is a little... Look at I did his shell darker, the background lighter, and the and the background is dark and his shell is about the same color. But I think I like this one better. Okay. So that is card number two. So what did I do with the first one? Whew. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this little guy. Like I said, it's a cute little treat holder. And I have the two Hershey's Kisses, and it's wrapped with DSP. And the DSP, I think, is um, what I do with my... It's about an inch wide. And all I did was, you know, cut a strip and wrapped it and glued it. They fit perfectly in here. Okay, so let's get this one together. I think I've kept everybody long enough. So again, we're using the same colors. This one, actually, I don't have any sea foam except for the DSP. And for the ribbon, I actually took a strip of ribbon and cut it in half. So it would look nice on this little box. So for the old olive, it's three and five eighths by two. And I have it scored at one and a half and two and a quarter. And again, I'll have all the directions and the measurements in the PDF when uh, tomorrow afternoon. And we're just going to fold and burnish on the score lines. Okay. Now, for the box, it's 4 and 5 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. And each side is scored at 5 eighths and 1 and a quarter. So again, we're going to fold and burnish. And this would be the same way you would make a box. Um, the best way to do it, if you've never made a box before and you'd like to, you would take your little nuggets and actually lay them down and measure them. So they're about one and a quarter wide and this is an eighth of an inch bigger so if it's one and a quarter add an eighth of an inch and then it is about two inches and this should be about two and an eighth so you would add an eighth of an inch to whatever size box you want to make now, for this box, it's double-sided. So, I 
have my little sides at five eighths of an inch. So you would do, you know, go out, add on five eighths and five eighths on each side and expand it that way. Okay, so let's cut off these outside corners and we're going to cut off the three outside corners. You can see where the lines come through. And each corner has four little squares, so we're cutting the outside three squares off. I can get my scissor in there. Just like that. Now this one we're going to go all the way down because we have to create a tab. Let me just cut this off here. And we're just going to also angle this little tab just like that. We're also going to angle this outside piece. Not too much because this is going to be the inside of that box. And you don't want it angled too much, but once you... Um, fold in your sides it takes up a little space so you may find that your corners turn or get all crinkly so you need to make some space for your flaps so we're just doing the same thing same thing on this side did I cut this out a little we're just gonna tab that a little bit get that little piece out and we're going to do the same thing here okay and then we're going to do the same thing on this side so we're just going to tab that end and then we're going to cut all the way down because we're cutting off these three outside boxes okay let's just get this cut out <laughs> Iggy's snoring guess he's tired tonight okay so we're going to do the same thing on this side just going to angle an angle and I like to make sure that I cut that bump out so you really can't see it hey Karen how are those horses yeah it really does I like the darker too guys me too Okay, so now we have our little box. I am just going to grab my, if I know what I did with it. See, craziness, here it is, it's right in front of me. We're gonna use some tear and tape. And I'm gonna use my gift card as my um, cutter. And we're just going to add our tear and tape to the very ends now you see this is going to fold in so you're going to put it your tear and tape on the outside uh, rectangle of this box usually I use the top to my glue and I oh there it is okay so we're going to do this to all four sections oh did you have storms Karen we had some last night we're supposed to get some more tonight so we'll see I know they're headed in this direction so we'll see 
I don't know, though. Lately, I've been sleeping so soundly. I didn't even hear last night's storm. My neighbor actually told me about it. Okay. So now we have all our tearing tape on. For our little tabs, I am just going to use some glue. Get some glue right down to that score line. The Tombow glue is nice because it dries pretty quick. And again, it gives you, but it gives you some time to move things around. So you're just going to square this off. I feel like I have four thumbs. Make sure it's straight. Just like that. And we're going to do this side. Make sure it's squared. Now, as that's still drying, I'm just going to take off this tearing tape on this side. Make sure it's still square. And I'm going to fold this one in. This way it'll help glue that glue. Okay, and we're going to do the same on this side. Just square it off. Make sure your edges are nice and straight. Let's take off this tape, uh, paper, and tuck it in. And then we can do our sides. And this is our little nugget holder. And I didn't wrap two new ones. I don't even know if I have two more left. I have to restock my candy supply in here. Okay. So just for good measure, I'm just going to take my bone folder. Make sure that all my edges are really glued down good. Okay. So now it's going to fit right inside, just like that. But before we do that, we're going to glue these two pieces together. And then we'll, I'll fold it up. These are the little, this is the little tab. Now this is one inch one inch by three inches and then this is two and seven eighths by seven eighths and the little three inch piece is scored and it is scored at looks like seven eighths and one and a half and i'm just going to make sure this is on here really well and then i'm going to do a quick fold on the score lines. Like I said, this is the little strap. And I want this ready because this is going to go. And I need to just trim this off a little bit. So you'll find that you need to trim it. So we want to put this little box inside here. And you will have a little tiny edge, you'll notice, just about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. So we're going to add some glue on the back. This is going to be the binding of the little book. And then we're going to add some glue to the bottom. And then this little piece... We're going to add some glue to this piece on both sides. Okay. And what I want to do. Now I have don't have enough hands. But we're going to line this up. But I want to put this underneath. So make sure it's centered. Make sure you're back. That's why I'm using glue, because it'll give me a couple minutes just to move this around and make sure it's in there good. Because you want to make sure 
that when this folds up, it is nice and flat with the bottom of this little box. So our little cover will close. And here's our little flap. Let's take these out so you can see that it does still fit just like that, okay? And that's going to be our little strap. Now for the front, I have the soft sea foam and the pear pizzazz. And it's, um, what did I say this was? One and three eighths by two and an eighth. And then one and a quarter by two. And we're just going to layer these together. My glue is getting all gooky. It's warm in here, so my glue dots melt and my glue dries. Okay, so we're just going to layer those together. Now, while they are drying, I'm just going to grab my pearls again because I want to make sure that I don't get um, ink all over me and then on my card, of course. We're going to color up four pearls. Oops. And again, I use the nib part because I'm noticing that the brush part, if you try to, it's moving, color them, it gets a little, the tip gets a little um, soft. So, all right. We'll let those dry. Clean off my glue. All right, so we're going to glue this piece onto the top of the box. Just like that. Hey, Julie. <laughs> Too cute, huh? Okay. Now I did, since we've been doing so many turtles, I did do this little guy ahead of time. And again, it was it's just the same way that I did the rest of them. His little eyeballs are open. And I actually did stamp this little guy because I wanted him to stand out. He doesn't really stand out as well. So I did stamp him in Mossy Meadow. And I did the same thing other than I made him a little darker. I used the same colors for the green. The old olive. Um, yeah. What did I say? Oh, the soft sea foam. See, I keep forgetting that soft sea foam. The dark old olive, the soft sea foam, and the granny apple green. That's exactly how I did his little body. And for his shell, I did the same thing. But I believe I just colored in his shell completely with dark crumb cake. And then I stamped his little back in a uh, soft suede and the reason i did him ahead of time is because he had to be fussy cut and i figured you did, wouldn't want to see me sit here and fussy cut this little guy okay so now that this is all dry what i did was i took a velcro circle and cut it in half and I took off the piece of plastic on the side. Now, that piece is going to stick. 
that is the white instead of the clear and I stuck it on this side of the strap so this way when you do open the strap up you really don't notice the clear as much as you do the white I mean it's you can still see it but it's just not as noticeable so we're just going to close that up we're going to grab our little turtle and I think I'm going to have to use teeny tiny the little mini dimensionals and we're just going to stick one on his back and add him right here to the strap isn't he cute just love these little guys and then we're going to take the half a ribbon now i will warn you with this ribbon i did cut it in half and i did it because <laughs> julie did it last night on her card and i thought that was perfect that's why there was tape on it but this ribbon has a tendency to shred so you just have to be a little careful and then just cut off all those little um tassely pieces okay so let's smaller ribbon fat fingers can't get this to work okay there we go because with this little box it's so tiny what is um one and a half by two and a quarter so it's a little teeny box and the fat ribbon would just been too awkward all right so let's grab a glue dot and we're just going to stick this right there melty glue dots we're just going to add that ribbon grab my good scissors that need a sharpening cut this little tail And then our pearls should be dry. Get rid of that. And again, I'm just going to take my pearls, oops, and add them to the four corners. It's just a habit I had gotten into, and I stopped doing it. But I like the look of the pearls or any little embellishments. It just looks like we've um, used brads to add our front. So here's tonight's projects with our cute little turtle. Let's make some room here. I definitely like the darker better. So there's him. So there we go, our little turtles. And again, ladies, if you order, place an order um, by midnight on Monday for $35, not only will you get the make and takes, but you'll get that swag bag. So thanks, everybody. for your, Emma, can't you sharpen them by cutting? What are we sharpening? All right, Karen, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Nita. So I hope you like them. Thanks for joining me, ladies. And keep an eye out um, for some hints for the mystery card. Oh, yeah, that's true. For the mystery card event, um, I think it's June 5th. I'll be adding some... Uh, hints as to what we will be making and uh, i hope you can join i'm also going to have a, a thanks julie so i hope you had a good time i hope you have a great weekend and i hope the weather turns nice and we don't have any terrible storms so everybody have a great night 
looking forward to next week already and this and we're not even done with tonight thanks for joining i'll talk to you soon bye bye